Hello YouTube! I am Penstar, and this is Sid Meier's Civilization 6. More strategy and tactics. Today's topic, we're going to be talking districts. So in my last video, we covered uh, what you, should you do um, in terms of moving your settler and uh, founding your capital. Um, and uh, we've gone through a couple of exercises back there. Uh, link is in the description if you missed that video. Uh, today, we're going to talk about districts and how to plan for them and uh, just general ways to keep your city good and organized. Because while it is all well and good to look at the yield tiles, you need to think longer term. You need to think what are what is the grand plan for my city uh, and this could be for your capital or for any of your other ancillary cities so we've uh, go ahead and uh, uh, got started uh, with a game here as Scotland um, and just to give you a little context we started out on this tile and I made the executive decision to march ourselves over to the Plains Hill over here um, so that we could pick up uh, some extra production and still be within a good range of all the food and whatnot. As you can see this is a much more um, production heavy city site rather than a food heavy one so getting every scrap of food that we can get is going to be paramount for this city's health and growth. That being said, we are about to hook up the elephants. But our topic is, again, not on the on the uh, yields here, but rather our districts. So the districts that we uh, need to consider, well, there's two things you need to consider with districts. Where are you going to put them and what districts are you going to build? Not every city can or should have every district. And determining, uh, based on your play style, certain districts may be of greater or lesser importance. You know, if you are playing a religious game, or at least are trying to found an early religion, then the placement of that first uh, holy site is going to be paramount. However, if you don't give a rat's patootie about religion, then obviously you're not going to even be on the lookout for a good holy uh, holy site and you're going to be looking for other things so let's run through the list now there are lots of districts in the game and some of them are actually fairly late game uh, things like the neighborhood district um, and the aerodome and that sort of thing I'm not going to be considering those in this video we're just going to be considering all the way up to the industrial district because um, that comes in the medieval so that's early enough to really kind of factor it into your plans, even in your initial capital. Now, starting with the list of, um, well, in no particular order, we'll start with the Holy Site. Now, the Holy Site is one of two di uh, different districts that likes mountains. They will get a bonus for every uh, mountain tile they are adjacent to. Uh, they also get a bonus for every two forest tiles. You do not get half points or half bonuses for a single forest tile. So only even numbers of forests would be worth any sort of consideration. So what we're looking for is a combination of mount as many mountain tiles as we can get, along with as many, uh, many pairs of forest tiles that we can get. Now, looking at our build here, there's a couple of different uh, places that we could put it. Now, the um, now one little tip here for, for sort of marking out and planning out your potential uh, districts here is the map pin. You may not know about this tool. It can be found right here, the map pin. All you need to do is click on add pin and click on a tile that you would like to pin to sort of draw your attention to. So the first uh, candidate here would be, um, well, right here. We have ourselves, um, we'll call it, um, we'll do a, uh, um, a holy site. Uh, there we go, holy, a holy sites right here. Now, the, the, other, the other adjacencies that you uh, need to factor in, in addition to the mountains and the forests, are other districts. And your city center counts as a district. Now you need two other districts to get that bonus. So nothing. So right here, all we would do is just be getting the one, uh, the one set of bonuses here. Um, another, uh, another potential one would be here. Uh, this would give us the two mountains. So this would be a plus two bonus. We could also go right here. This would give us plus one, and then we have the two forests here, so this would be a plus two total as well. Um, 
Another possible consideration for a holy di site district is right here. One mountain, two forests. Um, and then the last one that I can really see that's, that's halfway decent would be right about here. One mountain, one, two forests. Um, now, herein come, lies the, uh, the, uh, the difficulty. I mean, we, got, we also have one mountain over here, but there's only one forest. You know, and if we, it, you can't get both this mountain and both of these forests here. You also can get multiple forests here, but no mountains, and you'd have to stop on the elephants, and nobody wants that. Um, so looking through our options here, the, the question now becomes, do you want your holy site early or later? Um, getting this obviously is quite easy. Um, getting this or this or this, uh, you're going to have to be spending some moolah to uh, sort of snake your city's borders out in that direction um, in order to pick up those tiles to build your district. So if you're getting a later holy district, that's fine. But early on, maybe not so much. Um, so in my, in my particular case, I am actually going to recommend the more accessible, but um, um, not maybe not quite as powerful early holy site district because we can also plan for additional districts to give it its additional adjacency since it's already getting half an adjacency for a bonus from our city. Now, next is district campus. Campus wants um, is uh, is the other district that wants um, adjacency to mountains. They also want adjacency to rainforest tiles. We don't have any rainforest near us. Well, all right, we got this and this. That's about it. So I guess we could, well, that's not even in our, no, that's not even in our range. So no, we can't even tap into rainforest proper. So we're pretty much looking at the same things as our, uh, as our holy sites, except we can't count on our forests. So pretty much the only really strong campus district would be, uh, oh, say right about here. Uh, what's a good sciencey one there? Campus district. Now, the you know, if we were to build a campus district here, our holy site would get itself some sweet, sweet bonuses. Um, we could also um, build a third district, say right about here, that would get adjacency bonuses from everything else. There's a lot of other um, a lot of other districts. Pretty much every district likes to get adjacency bonuses with other districts, so it kind of encourages you to cluster them. The um, uh, so, for example, um, another uh, and actually another uh, possibility would be the government plaza. You can only build one of those districts, but they give a full point of adjacency to every district near them. So a government plaza placed, say, right here would give a full uh, bonus to campus and a full bonus to the holy site. But since we could get away with a um, uh, just a normal district here, let's plan for that. Um, because each of these would get in, basically an adjacency bonus with another one. Now, the, uh, the next type of district, the, uh, the, co uh, the commercial hub. Commercial hub is, wants to be near a river and also wants to be near other districts, as well as that it also wants to be near a dock or a harbor. Um, we don't have any dock or harbor districts or any possibility for them, so that's right out. We do have some river tiles along here, so that works out well, but... Doesn't we can't really count on it for um, uh, good uh, uh, bonuses along there um, next to these districts, but we still want to factor it in or at least consider it. Um, the other thing with districts is because districts, when you place them, get rid of, of the natural tile yields on whatever tile that you're pl placing them on. You may want to avoid. Um, you want to uh, avoid putting them on really really good tiles. We would not want to put us district on the ivory here. I don't even think we could. Um, so a, a, co a commercial hub would actually be well, pretty quite nice right here. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, we'll do diamond. Commerce. Boom. 
Now, another type of district that we can factor in here is the theater square. The theater district is, um, is one that could certainly go just about anywhere because the theater district has real difficult time getting adjacency bonuses. It really doesn't get any adjacency bonuses from the natural environment. The only adjacency bonuses you can really milk out of it are next to wonders, but that, de for, that depends on where you can put wonders. Wonders have usually very fussy placement requirements. Um, so for example, if we were, um, well, we would still want to put a district here because that way the, um, all, all three of these districts would bonus off of each other here. Um, also putting a district, say, down here would um, get a little triangular bonus going for that. So uh, depending on where we would be able to put a wonder, we would be able to, to uh, plan our theater square. Uh, so let's just say, for example, uh, theater. If we put a theater right here, it would get all three of these would get uh, adjacency bonuses with each other of, of their own specific type. Now, another uh, another type of district to factor into place would be your industrial district, your your uh, your workshop hub. They get bonuses again from other districts, but also from mines, uh, mines, quarries, um, any of, any of those types of deals. They get those types of bonuses. Um, so. The looking around here, we've got quite a few hills, so we can probably get ourselves a pretty snazzy uh, industrial district here. But despite all the snazziness and abounding here, I don't really see a tile that could get any more than three adjacency bonuses um, uh, from from uh, different uh, from three different mines. So, for example, if we were to put it right here, we would put we'd be able to put a mine here, here, and here. We'd want to. Uh, take down the forest here, but we'd get be able to get uh, plus three here. Plus we'd be adjacent to the holy uh, the holy site here, um, and uh, that would be a pretty darn uh, high bonus uh, district to begin with here. So we let, we could do something um, like industrial like that. Um, now, another actual uh, uh, a possibility, if we were ever willing to, say, stomp on the, um, the wheat right here, which, I mean, maybe later in the game we'd be able to have some farms up elsewhere. The, we could get some triangular, triangular farms going down here that we could possibly um, uh, stomp on that. We could sort of compound our district bonuses here. Um, And put our commerce, uh, um, put our commerce square right here. Uh, obviously, we're not going to want to do that in the early game, but that would give us the that would give it the bonus from the river plus the bonuses from the adjacency bonuses around here, and the industrial zone would get a two district adjacency bonus. So it would get it would be like a fourth mine for the industrial uh, square here. Um, and then last but uh, now last but not least, there are there are the other uh, early sort of early game district is kind of an oddball one. It's the um, it's it's the uh, encampment district. This is where you um, can produce um, your military units and what have you. Um, you know, it can it can help defend things. It can give you bonuses to military unit production, but it doesn't really deal with adjacency bonuses by itself. It does not care about uh, adjacent districts or really, you know, want any of that. Um, but what it can do is, is, is it does count as a district. So it can do things to, for example, help out your, uh, help out the rest of your, your, um, you know, the rest of your districts here. So for example, the theater here has got one, two, um, three, but it gets an extra bonus for every two adjacent districts. So this third district being adjacent to it isn't really helping it. But if we were to say, for example, um, let's say put an 
An encampment what would be a good uh, do a shield here. Put an encampment here. While the encampment really doesn't give a crap about where it's placed, as long as it, the only the only rule with the encampment is it, is it can't be in your city's inner ring. Um, so the encampment doesn't care about how many districts it, it's near, but the theater will now see this as a fourth district and get two bonuses. Um, and let's say, for example, we were to, uh, oh, I don't know, build a wonder that um, next to the theater as well. Let's say, oh, I don't know, the Terracotta Army that would uh, that needs to be next to an encampment. Um, if we were to build that... So if we were to put the terracotta army right here, now the theater square would be hopping. Now it would be now it would be going gangbusters. Um, so that, my friends, would be sort of how you would plan these out. Now, is this city going to grow large enough to support all of these districts? No, no, not at all. Not till like the very very late game. Um, so the question now becomes, what do, what, what, which of these do we build? We can build what, I mean, as soon as we get the tax for them, we can start building them, uh, one after another, but there's only so many that we can support. So what would be our, our priority? And that, that, qu the answer to that really depends on both the sieve that you're playing as well as, um, you know, your, your attempted goal. Certain civs can, can um, go after multiple victory conditions. So science victory, yeah, maybe focus on the campus. Religious victory, yeah, get those holy sites down. Culture victory, theater square's the way to go. Domination, maybe uh, start with the encampment and go from there. Uh, now, one last thing to note, um, the one the one other early game district that I did not cover here, just because Sterling's not in a place to cover it, is the harbor. The harbor wants to be uh, next to your city center and sea resources. Ideally, as many sea resources as you can get away with. Now, given our limited uh, exploration of the ocean here, the only sea resource that I see um, would be these clams. So if I wanted to make a really good harbor district, uh, what I would have to do is I would have to uh, settle a city here. And then I would have to build my harbor either here or here. That would give the harbor the adjacency bonus with the city itself and the adjacency bonus with the pearls. Um, an alternative would be if we were to put uh, a city elsewhere and put a commerce district um, here. We can get uh, adjacency off of the commerce district. The only uh, the only uh, problem with that is that you only with the way they reworked it is um, um, you can get bonus trade route capacity, which is the pro pretty much the main draw of building either commerce districts or harbor districts, by uh, either building a market in the commerce district or a lighthouse in the in the harbor district. The problem is you don't get both. Like you can build both. You can build both a commerce and a uh, um, a harbor district, but you only the first of the two will give you a bonus trade route. So. Uh, generally, it's not that worth it to build both a uh, commerce district and a harbor district in the same city. Um, so getting, you know, real, it's better to rely on the city center for the adjacency bonuses with the harbor. Um, so we would just put, uh, let's say here. So that, my friends, is uh, my uh, my spiel on districts. Now, uh, this is just sort of um, planning out districts for just our capital here. When you go about looking for additional cities to settle, think about districts as well, because your districts can factor in and influence your uh, choice in city placement. Um, perhaps, um, you know, saving a tile that would be a really good district for, you know, say a campus or an industrial zone, rather than putting the city center there, might alter the way you place your city. Uh, so play around with it, experiment with it, and certainly factor it into your uh, build. You might be surprised how, uh, how many bonuses you can start racking up. Uh, so, um, 
If you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!